Hey guys, in today's video, I wanna teach you how to hit a two-handed forehand. Wait a second, I actually don't wanna teach you how to hit a two-handed forehand. The only two scenarios where it would be okay for you to hit a two-handed forehand are the following ones. Let's say that you've always hit the two-handed forehand, it just came natural to you and you hit it incredibly well. In this case, by all means, continue hitting your two-handed forehand. There's no problems with that. Also, if you are a recreational level player, when you have some physical issues where you cannot hit with one arm. I do get some rare cases with students who switch to a two-handed forehand and ask me to teach it to them, which led me to do a tremendous amount of research on the two-handed forehand, which I will present in today's video. But in any case, these players had physical issues and they're unable to hit the ball with one arm on the forehand side. And naturally, it's a good idea to maybe use a two-handed forehand if you happen to have these physical issues. But there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that the one-handed forehand is far superior to a two-handed forehand. So if you have a one-handed forehand, I do not want you to switch to a two-handed forehand. Now that we got that out of the way, let me tell you a story from my dad who also was a coach and he used to coach, back in the day it was called Yugoslavia, and he was the captain of the national junior team. And Monica Selish was on this team. And my dad told me the story about Monica when she was young. She was one of the best juniors in the history of tennis. She was so good at the age of 12 years old that she was winning all the 18s tournaments. It was something that was incredible to watch. And as you probably know, Monica has one of the best two-handed forehands in the history of tennis. And my dad told me that there were so many coaches who tried to get Monica to hit with a one-handed forehand because they thought it would be the better shot. But Monica's coach was her dad, Karol, and he did not allow any coach to touch Monica's forehand for a good reason, because the two-handed forehand just came natural to Monica and she indeed had one of the best forehands in the world, despite the fact that it was hit with two hands. When I did the research on the two-handed forehand, it was instantly clear to me that the two-handed forehand is one of the most complex shots in tennis because it can be hit in many different ways. Now, before I start explaining the two-handed forehand, I want to tell you that this is the only shot that I don't know how to hit. I did try to demonstrate it and I hit maybe one or two decent ones, but the vast majority of them were terrible and I had some technical flaws on my two-handed forehand. So by no means should you try to copy my two-handed forehand. But let's get started with the classic way of hitting a two-handed forehand. So let's say you are a right-handed player and you're gonna put your right hand, let's say in a semi-Western grip. There's gonna be some variations within the players, but generally most of them, such as Monica Selish or Marian Bartoli had their dominant hand in a semi-Western grip. And now the non-dominant hand goes in a continental grip counting from the lefty side. And now basically there's not gonna be a loop like you would have on a one-handed forehand. This was one of my mistakes when I was hitting the two-handed forehands. I was looping the racket too much and I felt like I was late on every single one. Because of a different sequencing of the torso rotation, very similar to a two-handed backhand, we don't need a big loop here. We can take the racket straight back. Now we can have the racket slightly above the handle, something that Monica did. And in my opinion, Monica, has the best two-handed forehand of all times. The one that looks the cleanest to me, technically speaking, is Peng. If you take a look at Peng's forehand, it is so clean, so crisp. And technically, it's very similar to Monica's forehand. The only difference is that Monica was lefty and Marion Bartoli and Peng were right-handed. So in any case, no loop. We're gonna take the racket back and now we're gonna sequence the torso rotation very similar to a two-handed back and we're gonna go forward and rotate at the same time. Naturally, we're gonna make contact with our dominant shoulder behind. This is going to be very different from a one-handed forehand. Our chest is going to be positioned to the side when we made contact. And then naturally, as we finish, the racket is going to go over the non-dominant shoulder. So technically speaking, the two-handed forehand is very similar to a two-handed backhand, but there's one aspect of it that makes it very uncomfortable for most players, and that is the position of the dominant wrists. You know, a two-handed backhand, the wrists are positioned natural. It feels good to take the racket back. But if you take the racket back by holding the racket with two hands and you take it back to about right here, you see how uncomfortably 
this wrist bends because I can't take the racket further back because my non-dominant arm is holding the racket so I can go to about right here and this angle of the wrist is very uncomfortable for most players. So again this is something that you're going to have to get used to because it does feel quite awkward and then from here once we let that racket go it is similar to a two-handed back and we're just going to rotate and go forward at the same time and then try to continue going until that racket goes above our non-dominant shoulder. So as I was doing the research on the two-handed forehand I saw some crazy techniques and I want to start off with Fabrice Santoro who was right-handed who would hit the forehand with two hands but he would actually slice most of his two-handed forehands with a continental grip with his dominant hand but every now and then he would do it very rarely he would hit a topspin two-handed forehand and he would actually put his dominant hand in a Hawaiian grip all the way past western and his non-dominant hand would go on the eastern backhand grip and this is something that looks so uncomfortable but he would get a tremendous amount of spin with the two hands his non-dominant hand would barely hold on to the racket and because his dominant hand was so far underneath the racket a vertical swing path was guaranteed and that ball would be spinning like crazy now if you try the Fabrice Santoro topspin two-handed forehand technique I guarantee you that you're going to have a hard time getting it over the net. But I'm going to tell you another player who had a crazy two-handed forehand, and that's Jan Michael Gamble. So he was also right-handed, and he would have his dominant hand in a semi-western grip. And instead of putting the non-dominant hand on top, he would overlap his hands like this, and he would hit the two-handed forehand with both hands on top of each other. Now, if you think that's weird, then you should check out Pancho Segura's two-handed forehand because he was also right-handed and he would put his dominant hand on top of the racket and then all of a sudden he would hit actually a left-handed two-handed like this. Why he did this, I'm not sure, but he had a lot of success with it. Another player that has similar technique who was also right-handed is, and her forehand might be the weirdest one of them all. So she hit a normal two-handed backhand. And then if you look closely, what she would do is flip her hands. She would put her dominant hand on top like this, and then she would hit a left-handed two-handed backhand. But check this out. She would finish with one arm like this. So you would do a hybrid, a two-handed lefty backhand and let go of the racket somewhere around here, ending up with a regular forehand. Why she did this? I have no idea. Should you copy this? Absolutely not. Did this work for her? It absolutely did. So again, guys, I made this video for a very small amount of viewers. I don't want you to switch from your one-handed forehand to a two-handed forehand because you're going to put yourself at a disadvantage. Only use a two-handed forehand if physical limitations or some injuries are preventing you from hitting the ball with one arm or if you like the pros and have always hit a two-handed forehand from day one. In those cases, it's perfectly fine to use a two-handed forehand.